Okay, welcome to our show, the Zach and Phil show, the, the Ryman Myman Timon show. We're going to be talking about, Zach, what are we going to be talking about? Well, it's like we had a radio show before. We did. Now we are moving up. And next year will be holograms. Yes. It was uh, like five years ago or something we stopped yeah. doing it. So it's, we prepared a uh, next step. Uh, we, it will be video show. We'll be discussing different uh, issues, uh, probably mainly political, and we'll uh, discuss the, one of the main topics would be how to defend against propaganda. But we'll also analyze, uh, hopefully, with a different angle, uh, those issues that uh, are interesting to the public. Sounds great. So we're starting today with uh, the presidential debate last night, Trump versus Biden. We have, we're coming with an asymmetry of information. Zach watched it. I didn't watch it. So, Zach, you tell us, where should, how far should I fast forward to? Where do you want to start? We'll, we'll just discuss a single question. Okay. And uh, we'll see what people say. If it is interesting, we'll discuss the second question. There were several questions during this, quite a few during okay. this debate. So which question should we start with, the first one? First one. Can you... Is that, is that right here? Scroll it. Oh, man. Anyway. Okay. Gentlemen, a lot of people have been waiting for this night, so let's get going. Our first subject is the Supreme Court. President Trump, you nominated Amy Coney Barrett over the weekend to succeed the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the court. You say the Constitution is clear about your obligation and the Senate's to consider a nominee to the court. Vice President Biden, you say that this is an effort by the President and Republicans to jam through an appointment and what you call an abuse of power. My first question to both of you tonight, why are you right in the argument you make and your opponent wrong, and where do you think a Justice Barrett would take the court? President Trump, in this first segment, you go first, two minutes. Can you stop? Can you stop it? Yeah. Can you, stop it? Can you answer this? Because you didn't see the debate. What would you answer? How would you answer this question if you are Trump? So I don't, I don't know if I can do a Trump impression, but I would say, uh, look, uh, it's our constitutional obligation to have a complete Supreme Court. We can't deny the people their rights. This is the highest court in the land. It deserves to be full. Uh, if the Senate does not approve, it does not approve. But if the Senate approves and I have a worthy candidate, then it's my obligation to put her forward. And it's the Senate's obligation to evaluate the candidate. Perfect. I am surprised that he didn't answer that. And Chris actually asked, told him in the question that it's according to the Constitution. Trump never single time says the word Constitution. I was really surprised. Maybe he didn't understand the question. Maybe he thought the question was, why do you think your choice is so good? Because he started saying that uh, his choice is great, she's a great woman, seven children and stuff. It's uh, absolutely irrelevant. He should have said, like you said, uh, I'm president, I swore, I swear to uphold the Constitution. That's written in the Constitution that I should propose, pick up the choice for Supreme Court. And right. that's what I did. And right. if Biden doesn't agree with this, then how can he be considering even running for the post of a president? That's in right. the Constitution. Right. That should stop all discussion. Look what, now look what Trump said. Okay. So I will tell you very simply, we won the election. Elections have consequences. We have the Senate, we have the White House, and we have a phenomenal nominee, respected by all, top, top academic, uh, good in every way, good in every way. In fact, uh, some okay. of the biggest endorsers are very liberal people from Notre Dame and other places. So I think she's going to be fantastic. We have plenty of time, uh, even if we did it after the election itself. I have a lot of time after the election, as you know. So I think that uh, she will be outstanding. She's going to be uh, as good as anybody that has served on that court. We really feel that. Uh, we have a professor at Notre Dame, highly respected by all, said she's the single greatest student he's ever had. He's been a professor for a long time at a great school. And uh, we just, uh, we won the election, and therefore we have the right to choose her. 
and very few people knowingly would say otherwise. And by the way, the Democrats, they wouldn't even think about not doing it. If they had, the only difference is to try and do it faster. There's no way they would give it up. They had Merritt Garland, but the problem is they didn't have the election, so they were stopped. And probably that would happen in reverse also. Definitely would happen in reverse. So we won the election, and we have the right to do it, Chris. President Trump, thank you. What, um, what, what do you think? Vice what President think? Biden. Um, it's not how I would have answered. Uh, he's talking more about rights than duties uh, and comparing it to what the Democrats would or would not have done. Um, but you know, I answer the question that's asked. Um, President Trump has an uncanny ability to go beyond what's asked and address what's really in the hearts and minds of the viewers. He doesn't care about the moderator. I, I, I care too much about what the moderator is asking. He's asking, let me answer it, fine. But he thinks about things like, look, you want to talk about this topic, Great. I, I grant you the, the right to choose the topic, but you don't have the right to force me uh, to answer how you want or technically or whatever. You brought her up. I'll talk about what I want to talk about with her. Um, so the question is not, did it convince the moderator, because who cares, but did it have an effect uh, on the general population of getting across the message that he wants to get across? The message I would have gotten across is, it almost sounds reluctant the way I said, oh, you know, man, I just, I, I have to do it. I'm so sorry. Right. It right. Makes right. It kind of weak, but he's like, look, it's, it's my choice, my option. And I choose to exercise it. Maybe that makes him, it may make him appear more presidential in the eyes of people. Who've, you know, he's making the leadership decisions that I'm more of like, Oh man, I have to do it. My arms twisted. Uh, and he's talking about her and her qualifications and pointing out the hypocrisy of the Democrats. Those are key points, not just for this little teeny tiny message, but his overall theme. So maybe he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I mean, no, no, yeah, yeah, I'm listening at second time and I kind of agree with you. I, uh, it looks better this time because first of all, Chris already said the word constitution in the question. So it's a given. And instead of saying like defensively, it's none of your business. I have to. I have the right to do this. I am. I have to do it according to the constitution. It would, as you said, and I feel the same way. It would sound as if he is defending his bad decision and bad person. And he went uh, uh, deeper, much deeper. Not just he answered even question. Even if there wasn't uh, this law in constitution. True. Would it be a good decision or not? And he answered this question, which is much uh, stricter. And maybe that's what on the mind of everybody. I think because you're right. I think you're not, right. Otherwise, it would have been, yeah, you had to do it, but you made a bad choice. Yeah, or you're, you're absolutely right, because it was kind of a trap mentioning the Constitution. I fell for it, right? I'm saying, well, the Constitution is my duty. And then the natural follow-up is, well, look, here's precedent that you don't have to. You could wait a year. Or suppose the Senate agrees, let's just wait, right? Now the mm -hmm. obligation is gone. Now what's your answer? Now you're kind of stuck, right? Oh, well, I was right. only doing it because I had to? No, right. I have the right, right? right? And I choose to exercise it because she's so wonderful, and here's how wonderful she is. Maybe his I'm glad I'm glad we are doing this because I was very upset when I watched him first time, and I said he did terribly. He didn't. He never mentioned constitution, and now I think it was a deep and well thought and argued answer. Let's see what what uh, Biden said. Okay. There's one other thing to consider is, I could be wrong, but mentioning the Constitution is something that would help Republicans like him more, but it's not going to affect how Democrats view him, right? Uh, if he's trying to sway Democrat or independent votes, they don't care about the word Constitution. That's true. And it's actually the main uh, issue in his choice that whether uh, he, he picked the person who would uh, interpret Constitution as written. But the other choice, that's why Democrats are against it, because they have this concept of um, developing constitution, mm -hmm. leaving constitution. So that, that, that would be weaker answer. He yeah. kind of went even beyond that. Forget about constitution. Uh, I, that's will of the people. I made a good choice. And it says the Constitution right there in the background. So it's plenty enough times mentioned. Right. And Chris said it also. Yeah, in the, true. In the, all right, let's listen to Biden. Biden, yeah. you have two minutes. Well, first of all, um, thank you for 
doing this and I'm looking Thank forward you. to this, Mr. President. Thank you, I, uh, the American people have a right to have a say in who the Supreme Court nominee is. And that say occurs when they vote for a United States senators and when they vote for the President of the United States. They're not going to get that chance now because we're in the middle of an election already. The election has already started. Tens of thousands of people have already voted. And so oh the thing that should happen is we should wait. We should wait and see what the outcome of this oh election God. is. Because that's the only way the American people get to express their view is by who they elect as president and who they elect as vice president. Oh my gosh. Now, what's at stake here is the president's made it clear he wants to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. He's been running on that, he ran on that, and he's been governing on that. He's in the Supreme Court right now trying to get rid of uh, the, uh, the Affordable Care Act, which uh, will strip 20 million people from having insurance, health insurance now, if it, if they, if it goes into court. And, and uh, the justice, and I have nothing, I'm not opposed to the justice, she seems like a very fine person. But she's written before she went on the bench, which is her right, that she thinks that the Affordable Care Act is not constitutional. The other thing that's on the court, and if, and if it's struck down, what happens? Women's rights are fundamentally changed. Once again, a woman could be helped pay more money because she has a pre-existing condition of pregnancy. We we're able to, they were able to charge a woman more for the same exact procedure wow. a man did. Wow. Yes. And that ended when we, in fact, passed the Affordable Care Act. And there's 100 million people who have pre-existing conditions, and they'll be taken away as well. Those pre-existing conditions, the insurance companies are going to love this. And so it's just not appropriate to do this before this election. If he wins the election and the Senate is Democrat or Republican, then it, he goes forward. If not, we should wait until February. All right. There are no that was the, oh, should we listen to Trump? Hundred million. No, no. What's the, the response? That was the worst possible response I could have imagined. He, he did the exact opposite of Trump. He went legal, but he had a flawed legal argument. Right? He said she's fine as a, as a person, which is exactly the opposite. Right? The point is, is she a bad nominee? If she's but, a nominee that he would support anyway, the, the whole thing is... But I, he, I think he advanced two reasons. First is because the election already started. Some people already that's, said that. That's, that. The, that's the flawed legal argument. Right? It's not that's just bizarre. flawed. It's, it's absurd. It's bizarre. Yeah. And second, because of pre-existing conditions. <laughs> the election is a pre-existing I also noticed something will we be able to roll back yeah. he, um, he started saying and when and he said affordable care act and he didn't remember the name of this so he looked down at his notes and ah, that's affordable. okay I don't, who cares it's okay who cares <laughs> everyone forgets that <laughs> he wanted to call it Obamacare right? well, I'm surprised he didn't but, Affo but he looked down affordable care <laughs> <laughs> uh, Florida. No, who cares? I don't care about that. That's, that's irrelevant. The, 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 but look, he did everything the opposite of Trump. Trump did not go to the constitutional legal arguments because those could be changed. Biden did, but his arguments were, as you said, absurd, that the election has started. Therefore, the president no longer works, the Senate no longer works. Um, his argument actually goes against him because people did vote for these senators precisely for the possibility that there may be some kind of opportunity to create a, a, to fill an opening in the Supreme Court. So his argument goes against him. The second part that he talks about the Affordable Care Act is, uh, he, he first of all, he says she's a good person, which you know undermines everything else he's going to say. And third, that he's saying that the... Uh, uh, this all is some kind of weird, secret, sinister plot to change the Affordable Care Act b because of this one Supreme Court. Like, it's a Supreme Court justice. She has more to do than just one choice, one vote, and then sit down and retire, right? She has, it's a lifetime appointment. Um, it, so it, it's, it's crazy. Also, he did the exact opposite of Trump. He, Trump is trying to reach across the aisle and try to get people who have not decided yet or are not going to already vote for him, get the other people to vote for him. Biden did not. He's bringing up what? The Affordable Care Act. Who cares about that? People who are already going to vote for Biden. Yeah. You, we want to see how what, what Chris said. Sure. He goes to the second question. That's the end of our show. Okay. Existing conditions. As far as a say is concerned, the people already had their say. They, okay. Justice Ginsburg said very powerfully, very strongly, at some point, 10 years ago or so, she said a president and the Senate is elected for a period of time, but a president's elected for four years. 
We're not elected for three years. I'm not elected for three years. So we have the Senate. We have a president. He's elected to the next During election. that period of time, during that period of time, we have an opening. I'm not elected for three years. I'm elected for four years. The and the 100 million started. people, Joe, the 100 million people is totally wrong. I don't know where you got that number. The bigger problem that you have is that you're going to extinguish 180 million people with their private health care, that they're very That's happy That's simply with. not true. Well, you said you're going that, to socialist. You're ahead. going to this socialist is, this medicine. Is, we're, we're now into, gentlemen, we're now into open discussion. Open discussion. Open discussion. Yes, I agree. Go ahead, Vice President. Well, Number one. Here, right? Let's stop here. I will, so yes, I, something that I noticed for the first time, I uh, thought that Trump was interrupting yesterday uh, all the time. But he never interrupted uh, Biden when he was talking. And Biden started interrupting Trump. So he pushed back. As always, he's pushing back when he's attacked. But it's completely different. He, he didn't start interrupting. No, that's true. All right, so what do we do? We, we score this one for a who? Who won this first question? Yeah, I, say, I, I say Zach won. Congratulations, Zach. You are the winner of this question one, and I will vote for you for president. Okay, I vote for you. So it's 1-1. <laughs> one, one. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that was good opening for Trump. I agree. And he didn't, the, the bully was Biden. He didn't interrupt him. And uh, his answer was more reasonable. Uh, Biden's answer was not just absurd. It was bizarre. It was beyond any possible logic, so to speak. It's not even... The wrong, false logic is beyond the logic. All right, let's stop here. And if you are interested in these kinds of analyses, feel free to like, subscribe, email us, send out a carrier pigeon, just send out good mental thoughts, whatever works for you, and we'll, we'll continue making them. If not, uh, ignore us and we won't make any more. Sounds <laughs> good. good. All right. Bye, everyone.